let's move on to our next presenter, which is Kalgoorlie Gold Mining. Uh, Kalgoorlie Gold Mining is trading under the ASX code KAL and has a market cap of approximately $5 million. Uh, Kalgoorlie Gold Mining is a proven low-cost gold discoverer with a significant portfolio of West Australian projects. Presenting today for the company, we have Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Matt Painter. Matt, welcome back to the uh, to the network and uh, please take it away. Thanks very much, Manny. It's, uh, and thank you for the uh, for having us back on the uh, Hidden Gems Share Cafe webinar. Um, as you can see, the sunshine has just come through the window at me, so apologies if it looks a bit odd to everybody out there. But look, I'm going to be talking to you about a lot of the work that we've been doing out around Kalgoorlie with Cal Gold, uh, and we're defining shallow gold in that part of the world, which for a lot of people, you know, they might think that that's long gone. And look, it was never a common thing around Kalgoorlie, but uh, we've uh, been targeting what we consider to be quite overlooked areas um, that have not been uh, explored properly for many, many years, uh, and we're having success doing that um, in the eastern goldfields of, of uh, Western Australia. Can I have the next slide, please? So very quick disclaimer there. Thank you. <laughs> um, look, well, here's a, here's a selection of our tenements anyway. And uh, the two main projects that we're focusing on are Pinjin out to the east uh, and Bulong Taurus closer to Kalgoorlie. Um, the Pinjin project's about 150-odd uh, k's east of Kalgoorlie along the roads. Uh, thick intercepts of gold from only three metres depth, which is a wonderful thing to see. It's an active M&A region uh, with Remelius Resources uh, just to the south of us. They're shoring up. Feed. They want to, they're going to have to want to shore up, shore up uh, feedstock for their proposed uh, Rebecca Mill down there. So they uh, picked up uh, Breaker Resources and Lake Row a little while ago. Um, we're not too far from them. It's a nice place to be. Um, and we've got a pipeline of prospects and deposits that we're defining at the moment. So we've got an upcoming initial Jork resource for Kigella Gift and Providence. Uh, we've got prompt follow-up coming of our recent Wessex discovery, and uh, we've got some new targets under shallow cover that are required for drilling. So we want this pipeline. We want to ultimately define a pile of resources if you know we have the success that we're hoping for. At Bulong Taurus, we've got outcropping gold at, at the La Mascot deposit. It was a very low-cost jork resource that we defined there, and it's only 35 kilometres from Kalgoorlie. So effectively, you know, what would be considered a stone throw from Kalgoorlie. Um, and we've got an outcropping gold deposit that somehow was overlooked. Uh, and the, we've got gold mineralisation there. It's open at depth in all directions. We've defined the resource down to a certain level, um, and we need to test further out from that one. Next slide, please. Uh, so out at Pinjin, uh, this is a view of our first drill hole uh, that we performed on the project. In the distance there, you can see a brown uh, smudge out there. That's uh, Lake Rebecca to the south of us. Uh, and uh, this is at the Kigella Gift Prospect where we intercepted some nice, thick, high-grade gold. Uh, where we are is in what's known as the Labor and Tectonic Zone. It's one of the prime uh, gold-bearing, mineralizing structures of the eastern gold fields, and it hosts some of the giants of the region like Granny Smith, Wallaby, Sunrise Dam that you can see on the left there. Uh, and that's the better explored part of the Labor and Tectonic Zone, if you like. We're on the what well, appears to be the mirror image southern part of that enormous structure uh, in the south. And that's where we've had more recent discoveries like Rebecca and the constituent deposits of that area. We've had Anglo-Saxon mined in recent years as well. Uh, but for us, it's and for, yeah, it's a very underexplored part of the world and partly because the exposure isn't so great down there. It's not as good as it used to be. Next slide, please. A, an oblique view from our project, you can see Anglo-Saxon in the foreground, you can see the Rebecca project of, of Romilius in the distance, and we've got a series of prospects in between. We've got about 20 kilometres of strike. Uh, kind of, we'll focus in on Wessex in the front, and we'll move to Kigala Gift and Providence shortly afterwards. Can I go next slide, please? So Wessex, uh, we had a recent uh, targeted air corps program where our results actually quite exceeded our expectations. It was really quite exciting for us. So for us to hit in what is uh, a preliminary style of uh, drill exploration, 28 metres at 1.27, that included 8 at 2.1. We had a 4 metres at 3 in there. Um, not the type of thing we were uh, expecting. It's the type of thing you hope for in Air Corps. Uh, and what we're seeing is that uh, this is matching up with historic drilling that came up to the, the tenement boundary um, by other operators. And you can see that on the map there. 
Um, from our drilling, we've defined 800 metres strike of gold mineralisation and anomalism, and it's open in all directions that we're open. We can't go to the west because of the tenement boundary, but to the north, east and south, it's wide open and that needs to follow up. Um, there's a number of drill targets that we've defined and we've circled one of the areas on there and you can see there's quite a few unusual looking mag features in there. We don't have a full understanding of what they are and uh, we're going to make sure we get that because we're going to drill those and see what we've actually got down there. So we're designing that program right now. And one of the things we want to try and work out is uh, in the top right of that map, you can see Anglo-Saxon there, that's the open pit gold mine. Um, we're a kilometre away from that and we're really wondering if this is all part of the greater Anglo-Saxon mineralising system. That's what we're going to test. Next slide, please. Part of what we've been doing uh, is, is looking for and defining more targets. So you can see in the map here on the right, we've got the Anglo-Saxon deposit. Rebecca is further to the south of this map, but we've got the red dotted lines there defining the grain, if you like, of the labor and tectonic zone. And we've got a whole series of summary sorts of targets that we can see here. Um, we're between Anglo-Saxon and Rebecca, and all these high priority targets that we've defined, well, not all, but most have not been drilled. We're going to be targeting the shallower parts of them. We can see roughly where Paleo Channel runs through under that. The, the targets can continue under that in places, um, but it's deeper. So we'll focus in on the shallow parts of it first. And if these things have legs, they go to depth. And they've got lateral extent, we'll follow them under the payload channels then. But shallow targets first and move into those if we need to later. Um, and we are also down at Kogela Gift of Providence down to the south there, where we've done a lot of our drilling where we're building the Jork resource. Um, we've got a deep intersection target there that needs testing. And uh, we've got a bunch of structural repeat targets and strike extensions that need work as well there. So a lot of work to do out there. It's going to be rather exciting. Next slide, please. And at Kigella Gift and Providence itself, um, we're dealing with a thick shear hosted style of gold mineralization. This is absolutely typical of what we see in the labor and tectonic zones. It sounds similar to what's down at Rebecca to the south. It sounds similar to the major deposits at the north. First jock resource coming very soon. Uh, and look, it's got a shallow gold focus so that we can focus in on defining a future, a future open pit. And, you know, as I talked about before with Romelius setting up their gold mill to the south at Rebecca, um, we're only 21 kilometers away from that uh, proposed mill site. So uh, hopefully, you know, if all will start aligning, we can start to see that we could potentially provide feed to such a mill in that area. Otherwise, Karasu Dam, not far to the west. Next slide, please. I'll take you back further to the west towards Kalgoorlie now, and this is the Bulong Taurus Gold Project. And uh, you're looking on the left at some of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, gold veins and what have you containing a beautiful amount of gold there that was retrieved by our prospecting partners in outcrop from or from a half a metre down really uh, uh, over top of uh, the Lama Scott deposit and on the right what we're looking at is uh, the, the projected outcropping to near outcropping gold mineralisation as modelled in the block model for the resource. Uh, it's there, it's sitting out of the ground, it's been there since the, uh, since the uh, gold rush. Uh, prospectors have worked it nearly continuously in that time um, and uh, we've just defined the resource on it and uh, can take people out and show them on the ground that there is gold sticking out of the ground near Kalgoorlie. Quite incredible in this day and age. Next slide, please. So here we are, Lama Scott, 138,000 ounces. We've got about, uh, give or take 1.2 1, 1 grams per tonne, but there's some nice higher grade bits in it, which I'll show you shortly. And we're in a really good neighbourhood. We're not far from Miri, um, Black Cat's deposit that they recently announced they're going to be restarting soon. And Horizon have got a cannon deposit, which uh, everybody wanted a cannon about five years ago. It's a great little deposit. Um, and Horizon uh, going back in and mining the underground part of that uh, very shortly. So we're in a really good neighbourhood. You can see there's a road directly out to La Mascot. We think it's probably about five k's of uh, well-maintained tracks to get down to the deposit itself, but about 35 kilometres into Kalgoorlie Boulder from, uh, from uh, the deposit site. Um, First pass resource that we defined, this, this, this particular resource, we've got 3.6 at 1.2. Uh, it's got expansion potential, it's completely open at depth. We cut it off at a particular depth uh, and uh, there's mineralization continuing below that and beyond that and we're gonna follow that up. Um, and we did it very, very uh, cheaply as well. We pulled out historic data, old handwritten logs and what have you, digitized the whole lot, got it all up and going and were able to find this resource for only $4.60 an ounce. Um, when you see others uh, talking about how they were able to find resources very cheaply at $40 or $50 an ounce. 
Um, we've done a rather good job there, I think. Next slide, please. This is one of the exciting parts of it is that this is the block model from Lamas Scott. We've got outcropping gold mineralization that's highlighted right there. You can see the purples, which are uh, you know higher grade gold mineralization, uh, actually sticking out at its surface. Uh, we've got gold and quartz veins available, visible. I've got a couple of chunks here just just next to me on the on, on my bookcase just to uh, keep my uh, keep myself focused on these things. Um, and it's open at depth. Um, and that stacked vein system that you can see modeled there, it's about 175 meters thick. And that's really important because that gives us great ounces per vertical meter in the event that we uh, manage to uh, get an open pit started there. And that's something that we're looking, you know, looking at what we can possibly do in that regard. We're on a mining license, very important. It's very suitable for open pit mining. We seem, seem to have a simple, straightforward metallurgy. Uh, and we've got programs defined to increase the resource. So stand by for hopefully some more news on that in the future. Next slide, please. So look, we're a little company, uh, we've got a bit of cash, um, no debt and what have you, and you can see the, the share price is sort of starting to increase a little bit. And we're starting to see uh, a little bit of a recovery in terms of uh, 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 market sentiment towards gold. And uh, what, uh, you know, when particularly a number of pundit, pundits in the next uh, six to 12 months are suggesting that uh, gold might be for a bull run, we sincerely hope they're correct. And look, I think that Calgold's probably one of the best positioned companies to take advantage of that future bull run. So uh, look, thank you for your time, um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, fantastic. All right, can we um, can we start with um, a question around? Now you've you've touched on the uh, uh, mineral resource estimates, uh, so yep. your MRE. Um, can you just remind us or give us a snapshot of where where is that mineral resource estimate sitting across your portfolio? So what's what have you got? And when are you going to update those numbers? So at the moment, we've got the, the mineral resource at uh, La Mascot. Um, and that's the one that's 35 kilometres east of Kalgoorlie. That's the uh, 3.6 million tonnes at uh, 1.2 uh, grams per tonne, give or take, uh, for about 138,000 ounces. Uh, and that's the one that's outcropping. That's the one that we can see there's higher grade pods near surface. And that's what we're looking at. You know, if we can put a small pit around that and recover some gold, then that's a great bit of uh, um, cash flow for the company. Uh, the other resource is out that we're, we're uh, working on at the moment is out at uh, on the Pingin project. It's the first pardon me, of our, um, of our uh, resource calculations in the area. Um, and that uh, we hope to have some news on soon. Um, and uh, we anticipate what we're hoping, what we're trying to do in that area is define a whole series, a whole chain of uh, prospects, deposits and what have you. And what we want to try and see out there is that uh, we define a series of jork resources uh, to build up the company, uh, the company's gold uh, uh, portfolio, if you like. So um, we anticipate this is the first one. What that does is getting a, a small, shallow resource together for starters allows us to start talking to potential operators that could help us with the mining operation. Um, we're a small company, so anything that we do like that is quite material. Yeah, it'd be lovely to go through and, and define quarter million, half million ounces, but for us, we can get in there, we can find something that's shallow, easily accessible, and that could be a very quick path for us to, uh, to income. Okay. Um, now you just touched on this, so if you can elaborate a little bit more, you you did mention you you do have some parties around you. Um, have there been discussions about potentially, you know, uh, you know, sort of some 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 form of uh, of development um, using what Calgold has, uh, perhaps with some of your neighbours. Ah, oh, look, it's the gold fields. Everybody chats. So. <laughs> uh, and as you can imagine, uh, people chat a lot more when the gold price goes up. So I think when we put the uh, when we put the uh, resource together at Lamas Scott, the gold price was around twenty five hundred Aussie dollars per ounce. It's now around it's over thirty five hundred per ounce. Um, you know, that sparks conversations, obviously. Um, there's nothing I can really talk about at the moment. But yeah, look. We, we pride ourselves on having good relations with the traditional owners, with the surrounding miners, with the station owners and what have you. Um, and so, you know, where there's opportunity, we want to be there chatting to people. And so um, it's clear that, uh, you know, there is demand for shallow gold, for shallow oxide gold in particular. It's quite prized in some of the mills. And if that's a, a need we can fulfil, then we'll be putting our hand up for it. Okay, fantastic. 
And uh, just one more question before you do go. Um, in terms of your um, your one of your neighbours, now you've talked about Pinch and Wessex uh, prospect. And how does that compare to your neighbour, to your neighbour, the Hawthorne Resources Open Pit Development? Uh, well, it doesn't compare yet because we're much earlier stage. Um, but what we see there is that uh, the Anglo-Saxon deposit, sometimes known as the Trouser Legs Project, uh, it was an operating mine up until a couple of years ago. Uh, I think they pulled something like 50,000 ounces out of the pit, but I'm happy to be, happily be corrected on that. The overall resources is, is about uh, 210,000 ounces there. It's at the very southern end of the old historic Pingen Goldfield. Um, and then once you get south of Anglo-Saxon, you've just got a, a thin mantle of uh, transported cover over the landscape. From what we can see, the, the, the Pingen Goldfield doesn't actually stop there. It physically stopped there from the old for the old timers. There was nothing else for them to look at. From what we're seeing, we can see that the mineralisation seems to continue further south, just under effectively that much, a very thin amount of transported cover. And that's our big opportunity down there. So hopefully uh, what we find will compare very, very well with Anglo-Saxon in future. Okay, fantastic. Matt, thank you uh, for your time um, today. And it was great to get an update on on Cal Gold. You guys are certainly very busy. Um, you know, hopefully we get you back later in the year with uh, with some fan you know, with some fantastic results. I look forward to it. Many thanks very much.